Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at the Tucson TS-165. This is the oval version. It's got a G10 treatment uh, or milled section, kind of like the uh, giant silkworm that Harns has. The same knife comes with a different uh, style handle, exact same shape, just uh, the milling shape a texture, I should say, on the G10 is different. The same black and white G10 colors. Uh, TS Model 165, that's about halfway through what they've got now. They're into their mid 300s now. So this isn't a brand new knife on theirs. It's one of the lower cost knives. It's $49.99 at White Mountain Knives. They've got both styles. I don't remember if both styles are in stock when I'm recording this, but hopefully I'll leave links down below. When you shop at White Mountain Knives, use coupon code CCE instead of LTK. Just kidding. If you want to use LTKs, that's Lee at Love Them Knives. If you want to use his coupon code, it's the exact same 10% off that you get with CCE. <laughs> Just kidding around. Makes no difference. So. We're going to take a good look at this knife. This is a Wong Design 14C 28 inch stainless steel. It's a decent budget knife. You might like it. This funky texture here is actually very comfortable and quite grippy. So let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at the TS-165 Oval. All right, let's start off with the uh, size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Line up those pivot pins. We're looking at very close to the exact same size knife. I think the TS Prof is actually a tiny TS Prof. The Tucson, I'm thinking sharpeners today. The Tucson is a tiny bit longer. Other than that, you know, they're very similar in size and shape. It looks like the handle's thicker on the Tucson, but it doesn't really feel thicker, especially with this texture. We've got these bumps on here, as you can see. The white spots are the high spots, and then you know it gets milled down through three, one, two, three, four layers of G10, where you hit the, the valley between those bumps, if you want to call them hills or whatever. But you can sort of see the texture right there, how it works. It's actually quite comfortable in hand, very grippy. The handle has got these uh, choils, I guess, the, or little scoops out of the back. And same thing out of the belly of the handle. And then it goes along the blade for three steps right there, along with swedges. It's fairly narrow along the tip of the blade there. It's one of the cons on this knife is if you do want a knife that you're going to use for doing hard work and you're going to push hard with your thumb here, that's not very comfortable for a thumb to put pressure on. The blade shape, we've got a slight drop point. There's a swedge that goes all the way along the end of the blade, as well as an extra little one on those little scooped sections. So I'm not calling it a full flat grind, although it is a full, it is a flat grind. We've got a fuller in here that's about halfway along on both sides. Two suns got their name on the bevel there. At least it's not super dark. So I don't like, you know, branding and stuff on the main bevel, but Two Sun likes to do that. Thankfully, it's not that dark. And then on this side, Wong Design, it's a little bit bigger than I prefer. And then right there, it says 14C 28N on the Ricasso. You can see the sharpness choil. It's an ideal sharpness choil. It's exactly like what I want to see on a sharpness choil. There's plenty there. You can sharpen the knife many times before you run out of the choil. It's just great. The blade shape with the swedge and the main bevel here comes to a strong tip. Although it looks quite thin, it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't go hammering this into hardwood and then prying it over at all, but it's a fairly strong tip for what you get. You've got a very long belly and then this short straight section. 
it slices very well. I was surprised at how well it sliced. I thought it was going to be, you know, a little tougher to get through things, but they've done a good job with this thing. It's nice and thin behind the grind, and uh, that really helps it a lot. So it's great for puncturing and for cutting. It's a good all-round knife. The uh, action on here, we've got ball bearings in there. I'll show you those later on in the video. There's the flipper right there. There's a little bit of jimping on the front. The top corner of that flipper right there, it feels a little hot. Sometimes when you go to flip it, at least when I did, it feels like you're pushing on just a narrow little piece of metal. So it's not the best design flipper, but with the good action, you know, it works. Whoop, hitting the table, it works just fine. You can do, you know, that way where it's pushing on an angle or light switch method works great as well. And I've not used anything in these uh, pivots yet because uh, Tucson does not put Loctite or anything in their pivot screws, which means as you use the knife, that screw comes loose and it comes loose quickly. So there's that to deal with, which is why I really like VC3 Vibratite. It's not a thread locker. It's called Thread Mate. In my opinion, works quite a bit better than thread lockers do, like Loctite. I've got whole videos on that if you want to see it. I'll link them down below. Uh, so the pivot screw, quite good. It's a D-shaped pivot pin like Tucson usually does. Well, I'll double check that when I go inside. I haven't taken it apart yet. And the detent is very good. It holds it well enough so that when you hold just the handle and do a sudden shake and come to a quick stop, the blade does not come out. So that's a very good thing. I prefer that. And uh, that's pretty much it for the blade. The lockup, it's very good. I like that it's fully engaged on the tang of the blade, and yet there's lots of room for it to wear over. This is exactly how I like to see a lockup on a brand new liner lock or frame lock knife. The liners are highly skeletonized. We'll show you those when I take it apart. We've got a backspacer with a pin here for a lanyard. I like that style with the lanyard pin and stuff, but I would prefer if this pin were back here. So if this whole section here was just pivoted over and back a bit. With the uh, shape of the blade here, with it coming back so at such an angle, they could have easily moved this a whole, I don't know, 30, 40 degrees over so it's closer to the end so that when you put paracord on there, it doesn't come you know, into the palm of your hand. Instead, it comes out the back. It's pretty minor because I don't really use lanyards. And most people who use lanyards, they're not going to find that to be a major problem. But it's a design thing that I think they could have done better than they did. We've got this uh, pocket clip that's pretty standard on the budget Tucson knives. And I keep complaining about it always. It's bigger than it needs to be. Uh, you know, comes out further. And because they use those bigger button screws, you know, they have to have it coming out further. Is it functional? Yeah, it's functional. It works pretty good. Or pretty well, I should say, using proper English. The uh, tip of the pocket clip is flat and it's not a hot spot in the hand. It always goes right down to the bottom, and so all you see is that pocket clip sticking out of your pocket. That little bit of a hole that's there, it's easy to get your thumb on it. Gives you a little bit extra grip to pull the knife out. So it's not a bad pocket clip. I just would prefer if they uh, used flush screws, maybe. It's screwed on to the very top, so I really would have liked to have seen them make it right and left friendly. All it would take is another hole right here. And, um, you know, that screw that's on this side, they use these flush screws here at Tucson, uh, very much like the uh, Kubi and Civivi kind of screws that I really like. They could have easily made it go to either side. And I really wish they would have done that. Especially on a knife like this with the, with, with the way the texture is up here, it would be virtually invisible for them to have the option of a left pocket clip. The uh, pivot pin's flush on this side. There's three little notches on the side. I bought one of Tucson's special screwdrivers for it. 
if you've got one of these that does have the free spinning pivot, you can hold this side using that tool because it fits right over those three little points and then you can bada bing bada boom, zoom, zoom, zoom. Well, back to this guy. I forget what I said before because I've taken a four hour break between that last section and this section. I think it's time to go over all the sizes, dimensions, and those good things. 127 grams, 4.5 ounces. Not bad for a big knife. The factory sharpness, 75 bess. That's about half of average. I mean, yeah, I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. About the dimensions, the sizes. Cutting edge, 96.5 millimeters, 3.8 inches. Yeah, almost four inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 95.6. That's 3.76 inches. So yeah, three and three quarters at the shortest. That's a big blade. The thickness of the... I think I got myself confused. Haven't done this in a while. <laughs> the thickness of the blade... 3.72 millimeters, 0.1465, so that's over an eighth of an inch thick. Nicely done. The blade depth, that's this measurement. It's right here at the heel, well, just before the heel, because that's the high spot right where my fingernail is, so up there. 24.6 millimeters, 0.97 of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? 0.37 millimeters, 14 and a half thousandths of an inch. Yeah. Another reason why she slices so good, 18.2 degrees, 18.7 degrees, with less than a degree of variability along the length on either side. Nicely done. The handle length, 123.2 millimeters, 4.85 inches. The grip area, it's about 11 centimeters, four and, three quarter, four and one quarter inches. Big hands. Yes, big hands can apply. The handle thickness at the peak of one of these bumps here and another peak of a bump on the other side, 16.3 millimeters, 0.642 of an inch, but it doesn't feel that thick, partly because, you know, that's just a bump. That's not how the whole thing is, so it just feels nice. The handle depth within the grip area, where's the widest point along here? Well, it's this peak right here. 25 millimeters on the nose, 0.98 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is here by the flipper. 33.8 millimeters, 1.33 inches. Total length of the knife, tip to tail. 218.8 millimeters, 6 point, no, 8.61 inches. Yeah, pretty good size knife. Like I said, $49.99 American at White Mountain Knives, take off that 10%, that makes it $44.99. So $45 American dollars for this knife. That's not bad at all. That makes this a fairly affordable knife. So what are my thoughts on it? I like this blade shape. If you're looking for a knife to actually use, this thing's great. Like I said, this tip here is wonderful for puncturing. That slow belly, it's a long gliding arc, and this short straight section here, nice and thin, good grind angles, great steel, at least for a budget steel, 14C28N is a really, really good budget steel. It just cuts really, really well. And for me, my fingers, the first three of them sort of fit in here really well. My pinky wants to end up on the peak of that if I choke up. So it's not a perfect fit for my hand. But if I want extra reach, I can reach back here like this, and I've got even more reach. You've got enough of a guard from that flipper so that if you need to puncture into things, it's fairly secure. Comfortable knife. I like this oval version. The other version looks like it's pretty appealing too. It's got that extra little slot cut into the handle. At least it looks like there's a slot cut in there. So get whichever one you want to get. I am suggesting that this is a knife that should probably be on your list of knives that you want if you aren't offended by how narrow the spine of the blade is right there. That's the biggest negative on this knife. 
the second one is that lanyard pin back there. If you like lanyards, you might want it a little further back. But let's take it apart and take a look inside. So I got a T8 right here. Let's loosen this guy up. Nicely done. Oh, it's all T8s. And the last screw on the pocket clip right here. And it comes apart just like that. It doesn't want to come apart at this tail. So that screw not all the way out. That's probably what it is. Yeah, I didn't take that screw all the way out. There you go. So you can see a little bit of skeletonizing here. It's kind of odd that they got these little cutout circles in here. But there it is. A ceramic detent ball. Ceramic washers. I mean, ball bearings. They are washers of a sort. And then look at all of that skeletonizing in here. Lots of skeletonizing. G10 back here. Locator pin there. And there's your lanyard option right there to get right through that hole. It's just a really good design. And of course, your typical Tucson, you've got your detent ramp for when you go to close the knife. And you know, it's a good looking knife. I like these ceramic ball bearings they're just great and let me just double check this yes technically no it isn't this is a d-shaped pin just right at the very end where does that d-shape engage okay it's a d-shaped pin right on the end but there's no d-shape on the hole so yeah this was a free spinning pin but like I said, uh, I'll leave a link down below for it so it's easy for you to find it. The tool that fits on, where's the pin again? There it is. The tool that fits on the end of here, it's a little bit pricey, but it's not crazy. And it means that you can undo these if you ever need to. Like if you end up putting Loctite in here, if you want to keep this from opening up and you put like real Loctite in there, you're going to want that tool. Of course, I'm going to use Vibratite VC3. So I'm going to put it back together off camera and then we'll have our closing comments. There you go. If you want the actual complete list, I forgot to say the cons. I wish that wasn't quite so sharp on the finger right there, but not a big deal at all. That goes along with the lanyard. I wish it was further back. Oh, the other thing I mentioned earlier in the video, the pocket clip, I really wish they'd make it both sides. They could have done that without changing the look of the knife hardly at all. Very unnoticeable in, in if you uh, if they wanted to so there you go for a 45 us dollars like i said earlier this is on my hit list i like it i like it quite a lot but i know it's not a style that's for everybody thanks so much my friends for watching my video thank you for liking sharing commenting and subscribing and remember friends cut towards your chum not your bleeding thumb Hey, it's not bleeding. Ta-da! Bye for now.